Hi, it's me, Whistler's brother. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm doing a tutorial on uh, how to warble. This is an advanced whistling technique. Uh, and that doesn't mean that you can't try it and can't be successful at it if you're just a beginner with your whistling. Uh, but uh, when I say advanced, it's just that it's going to take you a long time and a lot of practice to get good at it, most likely. Um, but uh, warbling means to quickly modulate between two different notes. And um, it goes something like this. Um, switching between the two different notes like that, there's different methods to do this. The method that I use is what I'm going to teach you, and you might not be successful with it. Um, I use my tongue. Pretty much anybody who warbles will tell you that you use your tongue, and that's going to be the, the switch, sort of, that you switch between different notes with. Uh, now, um, me, personally, I do it by putting my tongue on the inside of my bottom lip. Uh, there's another tutorial on YouTube by a YouTuber named Staffo420 on how to warble, and his is a very good tutorial. Um, he puts his tongue on the roof of his mouth to change notes. I can't do that. I've tried, and, and you know, I just stick with what I've been doing since I was 15 years old. I've been doing this for the last 25 years about, and now uh, my warbling has gotten much better recently. But um, here's the basics. Okay. <clears throat> When you're whistling, generally your tongue is going to be out of the way, your mouth is going to be uh, open, you're going to have a certain amount of air space inside your mouth, and the air is traveling through that, and then when it gets to the opening of your puckered lips, um, it's, going to, it's going to go through a much smaller opening. And when I warble, what I'm doing is I'm changing the size and shape of that air space, the cavern inside my mouth, okay? so. Really what I'm doing is I'm trapping air underneath my tongue. When I whistle the first note and then switch to the other note, I'm taking my tongue, which this, if this is, let's say this is the bottom of my mouth and this is my, uh, my bottom lip here and my teeth are sitting right here against my bottom lip. Okay, my tongue is kind of hanging back like this, just whatever. So I've got all this space here, okay? All this space inside my mouth and then when I switch to the other note, I'm putting my tongue here up against my bottom lip and I'm trapping like a mini cavern of air underneath my tongue so it's drastically changing the amount of airspace. I go from this much airspace to this much airspace inside my mouth. Okay, The lips, um, <clears throat> I'm not consciously aware whether my lips are actually changing or not with it. I don't think so because to do it that fast I think really it's just that the tongue is causing the inside of my mouth to be a different shape and a different size and that's causing the note to shift. So this is something like any technique with music or anything. You're going to have to play with it until you get it to work. But the main thing is, is you're going to want to trap air underneath your tongue when you place your tongue against the inside of your lower lip. So um, if this is my tongue, okay, this is what I'm doing when I'm doing this whistling. But the tongue is, anytime you have that sharp cutoff with a note where I'm switching to another note, the tongue is moving. It's either going here or it's going off. Now for me, generally, uh, and I think that you'll probably find this is true, that when you move the tongue to touching the inside of the bottom lip and cutting off uh, you know, that, that bubble of air underneath your tongue, you're going to have a smaller space inside your mouth. You're going from this much space to this much space instantly. And so it results in a higher note. I don't know the physics behind it, sorry. Maybe some genius can enlighten us all. But um, So that's basically it, really. Um, I don't know if I can give you any tips beyond that other than that it's probably going to take some trial and error. It's going to take some effort. And when you first start doing it, again, you're not going to sound like a pro at it. Um, when I first started, um, I could barely do it, and it was very, you know, it sounded kind of like, 
then I got better and better the more that I did it. And the more that you do anything, of course, you're going to get more control over it, you're going to get more comfortable with it, and it's going to become more natural to you. And eventually, when you've been warbling for a long time, you get to the point where you can just incorporate it into your whistling and into your songs without even thinking about it. So, I mean, if I try to whistle something these days without using my tongue to shift notes like that, it's very challenging because I'm so used to doing it. it just It's just natural. I don't even think about it anymore. So anyway, I hope this tutorial is helpful. If you have any more questions about it or if I can give you any additional uh, uh, help with anything specific that you're having trouble with, leave me some comments on the video and I will get back to you. I appreciate it very much. This is Whistler's Brother. <laughs> Signing off. And I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Keep on whistling.